aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? Of course, welcome to another top five video from yours truly, of course, the Scaranger. And as you guys can see on the screen, of course, it's gonna focus on top five losers of this generation. And we're not gonna go into individual Pokemon that are losers of this generation against, of course, the others. But more game mechanics and more situations around, of course, introduction in Generation 6, which made a series of Pokemon or events or mechanics to work less effective. And of course, remember, these are, of course, my own opinions and are based on just that. And of course, that um, I was inspired by a person or a booktuber calling the Silver League Network, who made a similar list with Loser of the Generation, but focusing more on the Pokemon. I want to go more in depth and try to talk about situation or things that change in, of course, the game that I feel are relevant and, of course, was effective in previous generation in contrast to, of course, generation six. And I do believe a list such as this will be a bit fun of looking back at once, of course, generation seven introduced whatever mechanics they're going to introduce and probably ensure that you're going to be on another list just as this, of course, for that individual generation. Having that said, we're gonna have a top 5 winner generation, of course, and I am right now talking a bit too much. So, with all this said, let's go, of course, to my number 5 spot. So, at the number 5 spot, we have, of course, the Speed Boost nerf. And that's quite significant that that uh, Speed Boost got a tremendous nerf in Generation 6. Uh, being, of course, a small took upon himself to actually fix what probably was quite tough to fix, to be honest. It took them over a year to really take it on, and even at that, it was wide open how they should treat it, but basically it came down to that you couldn't chain, baton chain at all. Uh, so all you could have the most have only one baton pass to another, and then it changed it again to that you couldn't pass um, any other status effect to get with speed to um, any other Pokemon. You could pass speed alone or any other stat, but not something with, of course, speed in contrast. Basically, to ensure that people weren't swept by the likes of Espeon, which was. Probably one of the most standing out, but also they had the same kind of issue with Combuscan and um, Sotu in NU. So that has been redeemed and quite fixed because Magic Bouncers, together with, of course, uh, Speed Booster, was pretty much immune to you know, Whirlwind and Roars, and uh, they could basically sweep rather easy. While it is a high risk, high reward system, it still is something that is quite tricky to play around and just general super annoying. And um, I do believe this might not be as much a game mechanics change as much as it's just a competitive scene change, which definitely we haven't seen anything like that before. Uh, and I do believe Scallopy was probably one setting this firmly in motion, but of course switching out from Quick Feet and being actually an NU Mon or a BL3 Mon in Generation 5 to becoming the OU BL Mon it is today. It's, it became something else. With Speed Boost, it just became a tremendous threat. And to get with Bad and Bass, it was super, super hard to deal with. So having this change meant that the metagame was being a much, much more healthier and a better variety. So this why it is on the number five spot. On number four spot, we actually have steel types and just steel types in general. Um, there weren't really a big change with steel type, but the one that did matter, matter a whole lot actually. And this was in the original course six, ghost and dark type which was a uh, regular resistance to seal type was now not, which actually meant quite a lot depending on which Pokemon you want to debate on. But the likes of, of course, Lucario missing out on resistances, uh, such as, of course, four times resistance to a possible sucker punch. Um, yeah, it's a big deal. It's actually a really big deal. Lucario is still super viable in, of course, UU and even in OU in some extent, but lacking resistances, yeah, it, sh it did definitely that showcase. But the one that got the cold shoulder here was definitely Metagross. Metagross still super, super, extremely viable when it comes to, of course, Yu-Yu. It's still very, very powerful as a general mod, but it definitely wasn't as powerful as it was in Generation 5's OU. And this, of course, getting from neutral damage from, of course, Dark and Ghost typing to super effective hits, which just made it tough for it to exist. It was very, very easy of getting high damage on Metagross, and while Metagross being severely bulky to some extent, it still isn't bulky enough to take hit after hit. And that is why you just free fall from OU to UU. Now they did save it with a Mega Evolution, most certainly, but um, the damage was already done to it. And of course, Skarmory, while still in OU, 
like two resistances it's a big deal and just steel type in general while it's still a very very good typing it definitely did showcase that of course missing these two quite common resistances did matter a whole lot for typing in general and as of course you can see on the smoke ones here it shows and at the number three spot is actually something i was wanted to push a bit higher but um, the other two are simply that big of a deal so i couldn't do it but the weather casters having rain sun and sand being limited not to go forever but five to eight turns was a big game changer so much so that excadrill went from being actually ubers at one point to be well regardless just a real OU Pokemon which is awesome but at the same time what the hell happened even Venusaur being of course a chlorophyll sweeper with growth was now less effective and um, it definitely did free fall Politoed being a very very commonly used with specs now was forced to use Damp Rock which made it definitely less viable Ninetales it's unrecognizable in OU you rarely see it you would rather use, of course, shards of Y, so... Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that these abilities went from being a stature of the meta in Generation 5 to be just... Eh, it's a nice niche, niche at best. Sand offense is still super viable due to Excadrill, but it's due to Excadrill alone. And same thing with Sun Teams, it only is viable due to shards of Y being able to spam Solar Beam, and even at that, it still is a very, very risky play. You rarely get to see any Chlorophyll Sweepers. And rain, yeah, I mean, eh, it's, it's not what it used to be, and while it does make me happy, it still is quite, quite a scene to see that we went from a metagame built on the foundation of weathers to basically it becoming just a game mechanic, if you want to use it, it's there, but it's not, it's limited, and um, it meant a lot for these Pokemon being extremely nerfed when it comes to a metagame. And that is why it is, of course, on the third spot. At number two, we have the dragon typing. And the dragon typing in general, because I do believe dragons, who was the, the stature for, of course, the metagame in both third generation, fourth generation, and five generation to generation six being, yeah, it's offensive at least. Um, it, it went from basically because was that big stature the pedestal of the pokemon you want to use the strongest dragon against one another it wasn't that uncommon to have two free dragons in an ou meta game in generation 5 to uh, well now being yeah you might want to avoid that since of course the fairy typing did so much to a lot of these guys i do believe the biggest nerve are definitely on salamans um, Haxorus, and hydreigon hydreigon going from the dual stab that just ruins everything to it's walled by a fairy type due to the dual Sure, it gets flash cannon, but knowing that fairy type usually are special defensive, Hydreigon basically can't hold on and being four times weak to fairies. Yeah, it's a tough cookie to crack, and it definitely shows. So Hydreigon still in UU, it's viable no UU anything, but yeah, it definitely got a big nerf. And of course, Salamence being quite commonly used with of course Scarf Moxie, now can't spam Outrage. That's that's a game changer for Salamence. It's an extreme nerf of it because it meant that it's forced to be on the course with Dragon Dance. And as I've stated before on a previous video, we have better Dragon Dances than Salamence. And Hydreigon is one of those Pokemon too, also quite known for, of course, just being a bandit set with Outrage. Now it's not even. Don't do it. Um, it needs Dragon Dance. And even at that, it just doesn't have the power or at least the moveset to force out the Pokemon so I can force it out and uh, it's just it's a big nerf well of course Dragonite and Garchomp still are relevant in the meta game it's very clear that Dragon typing went from being the fundamental typing of of course the whole meta game basically like I said from Generation 3 to becoming not as effective and um, a lot of a lot of very things have happened due to of course that alone so fair typing Fairy Type's introduction definitely was the demise of the Dragon Type's dominance in the meta game as we know of today. And the number one spot is an easy one, the Spin Blockers. They deserve to be on here, and 
yeah. A few guys may know, of course, about these guys and what they did for Generation 5 meta, and for you that aren't aware, basically, spin blockers were the fundamentals of stall your playstyle. To, of course, be able to stack hazards without having to worry, and of course, focusing on residual damage. With the introduction of Defog, these guys became, in lack of other words, kinda necessary. Um, it was not a secure way of stall play anymore because of Defog. And also, since the spin blockers, of course, being always ghost type to be able to, of course, be immune to rapid spin and knock off getting a racing attack. It was very clear that the Ghost type being, while getting some of, of course, boost would of course being able to deal with Steel types now, still got immensely nerfed because they were actually used in a different way. Miss Mage, for example, was definitely used in OUUU due to, of course, Levitate and Nasty Plot and uh, Willow Wisp, very, very speedy one. Frostless, same thing. Um, could definitely stand tall and has to stack without any issues whatsoever and block, of course, any kind of spinner. Golurk, while Nishi still had a reason to beat her, Gengar, great spin blocker, Sableye, great spin blocker, Jellicent, hell, it, it was the stature of OU for quite some time due to being, a bulk, being bulky and being able to actually take on a lot of offensive threats. And where are, where are they today? Well, I do believe only Gengar is the one in OU today. That is how big it is. Basically, um, every slow um, ghost type became very, 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 very bad. I do believe Golurk is the only one who actually stand in NU anyway because it was primarily bad due to ground typing. But most of these are definitely unviable in the metagame. And like I said, the reasons they've been using or being used today are because of the offensive typing it brings. It, it clearly can do stuff. But, um, well, let's just say Miss Mage is NU today, I do believe. Frostless, um, B and UU, but actually on R uh, BL2. And of course, Yellis and RU. So it's very clear that these Pokemon went from being a fundamental part of the metagame to be, well, they exist. <laughs> At least have that going. So, Spin Blocker is definitely the biggest nerf of, of course, Generation 6. And Defog as the introduction of Hazard Removal definitely meant the demise of the Spin Blockers, which are, like I said today, pretty much unrecognizable of what they represent or what they were. So having that said guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and of course share your thoughts which Pokemons or which game mechanics do you believe are the biggest changes of course and what did it meant for of course other Pokemons in the meta due to the change. Um, and with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.